in all the cities in King County, including the one you live in and the one I live in, if you added up all the untreated urban stormwater discharged every year, it would equal 118 billion gallons of polluted stormwater runoff. Untreated stormwater transports thousands of pollutants to aquatic environments. For example, roadways collect debris and contaminants, many of which are visible like the sheen from drips of oil, rainbows of diesel fuel, little broken bubbles of white styrofoam, plastic bags, plastic cups, plastic cup lids, and plastic straws that go in plastic cup lids. But many are unseen, such as pet waste, fertilizers, pesticides, copper from brake pad linings, and tiny black dust particles from rubber tires. We know from toxicology studies how harmful some of these contaminants are to fish. Toxicology is a branch of science concerned with the nature, effects, and detection of poisons. As cities keep growing and growing, we keep adding more cement for sidewalks, roadways, and parking lots. This is called urbanization, and the polluted stormwater that runs off these hard, impervious, impenetrable surfaces it's really detrimental to freshwater and coastal ecosystems. It hurts. It hurts salmon. Salmon are impacted in significant ways, and scientists are working to solve this problem. I'm curious to learn about their methodology and what they're discovering. Two facts we know for sure are, number one, increased exposure to pollutants leads to poor health in humans. Same applies to salmon. And number two, pollution-sensitive species like these Pacific herring are diminishing, resulting in less available prey for salmon to feed on. There is a way to isolate what makes pollutants, well, so polluted. One way to look at it is to understand roadway runoff is matter. Matter is all around us. Matter is composed of molecules. Molecules are made up of atoms. Sometimes these molecules are super complex, and often we don't know if they're causing harm to the environment, unless salmon tell us. In fact, scientists have found roadway runoff often contains a wide class of chemical contaminants called polyaromatic hydrocarbons. Polyaromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs for short. PAHs can come from motor oil spills, wood smoke, and vehicle exhaust that floats up into the atmosphere and comes down with the rain. Some PAHs are highly toxic to salmon. So why do we have PAHs in the first place? Well, unfortunately, it's because our modern world heavily relies on burning fossil fuels to generate electricity or to power transportation like cars, buses, trains, and planes or even help industrial processes that manufacture products that we need, like tires on a car. For example, phenanthrene is a PAH that is frequently detected in roadway runoff. Its chemical structure contains three rings, like these three hexagons, and they represent the different chemical elements in phenanthrene. Once exposed to this chemical, fish experience cardiotoxicity. This means their hearts weaken. Weaker hearts means reduced swimming performance. They're just not as strong. If I'm not as strong a swimmer, I can't chase down food. And I can't escape from being food for some other predator. I need to be an Olympic swimmer to survive. But I can't do that with a weakened heart. These figures are showing the swimming performance of pink salmon and herring following embryonic exposure to PAHs. Embryonic refers to an embryo which is an unhatched offspring. Very simply, what scientists have done is they've created an experiment exposing salmon eggs and herring eggs to PAHs and measured how well those two species of fish swim after being hatched. So these two graphs actually tell a story. The y-axis, vertical line on the left, 
measures the swimming performance of fish, while the x-axis, horizontal line on the bottom, measures the amount of micrograms of PAHs per liter of water. But both graphs show a significant drop in swimming performance for both species of fish as the PAH concentration increases. What's different is a drop in swimming performance was observed at a much lower concentration in herring compared to pink salmon. For pink salmon, the drop occurred at 15 micrograms per liter, but it had a similar effect for herring, only at a much lower concentration of 0.23 micrograms per liter. This is showing that there are differences in sensitivities to these types of pollutants based on different species. Herring have a much higher sensitivity than pink salmon, so even a little bit of exposure to pHs can drastically affect their swimming performance. Herring are important prey items for a large number of birds, marine mammals, and fish, especially Chinook and Coho salmon. Therefore, their sensitivity to pHs has compounding effects up the food chain. So are we witnessing the collapse of an ecosystem? And how do we turn this around? Because the science is pretty clear. So what are the solutions?